Hey guys, the Ascend Conference is just a few days away and it will be the space event of the year. We have a star-studded lineup, people like Gwen Shotwell, she is the president and COO of SpaceX, Pam Melroy, who is the NASA deputy administrator, and so many more amazing speakers. And Ascend not only features current leaders in the space industry, but there will also be students, the future generation attending Ascend. One of them in particular, you may remember from my live stream last month, when I was in Florida hoping to see Artemis launch of course that was scrubbed. Anna is currently going to school and her ultimate goal is to be an astronaut. She will also be attending the Ascend conference so I wanted to talk to her about what she's most excited about. What are you most excited for Ascend as a student? As a student I'm really excited uh, especially um, so just to give a little bit of background this year I applied for the AIAA diversity scholarship so basically, I'm going to this conference with everything paid uh, from the conference. And also, that's going to um, give me the opportunity to get to talk to some big people in the industry uh, in some um, luncheons or other kinds of events that are not listed for the everybody um, public. So that's like one of the things I'm really excited to be able to chat with like these big brains in the aerospace community. Um, and at the same time, I'm very curious to learn more about nuclear propulsion. And it seems like this conference is going to be like um, the place to learn yeah. about more about it. Um, also, it touches like the best and like most inter interesting topics in the aerospace community right now like other kinds of propulsion satellites um safe practices in the airspace industry so it seems like the holy grail <laughs> one that i'm most excited for the second it's advancements and partnerships for the future uh it's the one that win shotwell is going to be part of and i'm really excited to see that woman speaking um she's like one of my muse in the airspace industry one of the role people that I really um, see as a role model for what I want to accomplish. And at the same time, there will be Ellen Oshua, the astronaut, one of the astronauts wow. there. And uh, yeah, the two together are like my goals. My future goals are to become an astronaut and also to work with um, space exploration in general, like um, in the engineering side. So that's why I'm doing mechanical engineering um, and my background in chemistry, um, especially because I want to help on technologies that will help to push the frontier. So yeah, so right now I'm mostly working with liquid engines, um, but in the future, I'm really um, looking forward to understand more about nuclear propulsion. And actually, I've just begun to do my senior design project um, preparations in nuclear um, propulsion. So well, I went to high school in a technical um, uh, high school in Brazil. So this means that I got out of high school with a technical degree. So I already have a technical degree in chemistry. Um, and because of that, um, when I decided that I wanted to come here to study uh, college, I didn't have really the means or was accepted the first year. So I took a gap year and using my diploma, I went to work at uh, a power plant for GE. So I basically stayed there um, being a power plant operator. So I was doing like a lot of stuff that you can imagine like in a power plant operating all kinds of systems in high and medium low voltage, um, gas turbines, steam turbines. So it was pretty cool. And then I got accepted here at the University of Akron. Um, but uh, because of the pandemic, I couldn't come the first year. So I just kept working and studying um, from overseas. And then last year I came to campus and ever since I've been super involved with the rocketry team and with research in extreme materials. I feel like ever since I got here, um, it seems like all my efforts are quickly rewarded in t terms of like, I work hard, but I see the results of it coming faster than 
it used to be when I was in Brazil. And also it felt a little bit like for most part, I don't know because of my age or because of the time I was living there, it felt a little bit like all my ambitions seemed out of this world. In some in some regards, it is kind of out of this world since I want to be an astronaut. I want to work with uh, space exploration in general, um, but it didn't seem so feasible. And when I came here, it seemed like I don't know if it's it was because I started to connect with people more in this industry. Uh, but yeah, it definitely felt super more real and yeah. tangible what do you hope to uh you know walk away feeling or having learned after ascend i mean it's three days straight of just everything and i want to um carry an even stronger feeling that dreams like we have are even more feasible to uh access space and to make it much more um easy to enter in the industry um, and see like the efforts they have to make it cheaper. Um, yeah, and also I really hope to learn a bunch more in my technical areas like propulsion. As I said before, I'm really like excited about this. So I really hope to learn more about it. Um, and meanwhile, I really am curious to dig in other fields. I haven't had the chance to yeah. dig more like satellites and information because like this seems to be one of the big uh reasons for the space industry have expanded so much yeah. in the past um decades right you right. see like starlink and all the missions that we have with falcon 9 with the falcon um rockets right now it's because of that like you're launching satellites and so many other rockets are being launched recently because they want to put satellites. Right. So I think there are more stuff to learn on that. Well, and I appreciate you doing this interview because I don't think a lot of people know about the Ascend conference because it's so new. And so, you know, I'm going to be going, obviously you're going to be going, but do you think that it would still be beneficial for people to attend online? Yeah. I mean, all the information that I generally uh, grab about space and especially when I was in Brazil everything was online so you can see that you can learn a lot from being in front of a screen and especially when you know that the source is reliable and it's like the big people that really uh, understand what they're talking about right. so if you're attending this conference online you're having the same access to the brain that we are being there in person. It's just a different kind of experience in terms of like, well, we are we are going to be in Las Vegas, so what can I say? But, yeah. uh, right. um, exactly, but like, you still have the access to information. And I think that's the most valuable thing. And I believe right. that with the kind of architecture and planning that they had with the schedule that we can see online, we can already kind of have a feeling that there will be prepare to give a good experience also online. Well, with Gwen being your role model, um, what is one question you would want to ask her if you could? I am really curious to see what's her um, stand on nuclear propulsion, especially because we all know that um, the main goal of SpaceX is being a company that's going to help us push for to do interplanetary missions. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are developing Starship um, however, um, one of the big things like in propulsion is that, um, we have some, uh, constraints with chemical propulsions, um, and nuclear is, nuclear also has a lot of constraints, uh, but it's very known in the industry to, uh, be one of the best options for, uh, interplanetary missions because of like all the ISP, in other words, the efficiency of um the engine um and all the system itself being really good so i wonder why it's not being used yet by spacex and what are the plans moving forward if they really want just to stick with um chemical propulsions and see other systems or maybe combine both in the future that's also an option that's being researched uh lately but yeah again 
I'm not like a, an expert. I'm just learning more now. So I would really like ask her from my standpoint of being like a newbie by in the area and see her um point of view were you always naturally good at this stuff or how did you um because you know i i want to encourage more women to be interested in stem and i think um at least for you know myself i think it can be really overwhelming and maybe you just think oh i'm not i'm not smart enough to do this so was this something that always came naturally to you or uh how did you get into this field i think feeling overwhelmed is common sense like all of yeah. us feel overwhelmed. It's too much information. So how can you expect not to be overwhelmed by that? The only thing is feeling comfortable being overwhelmed and understanding that like some things take time to to like settle in your brain and for you to digest that information. That like there are certain topics that will come easier. For me, general like stuff related to efficiency and thermodynamics that what i digest better in fluid mechanics because but then like one thing that i have just realized lately is that these things are more natural for me because i went to a technical school in high school right so i was learning all of this stuff so i already had like a background that helped me to approach this information easier but it's not like it's not impossible to learn it in any time you're in life um it's more about like taking the time understanding that like new information takes a lot of effort to be digested and in engineering like it's really funny because i'm mechanical so i think that a lot of people expect of mechanical engineers to be like people that have played with in engines or like cars the whole life and like I went to school not knowing anything about that. <laughs> I like last year it was like my sophomore year. It was when I went on campus and it was really funny. I went to check the racing car team, like design team. And one of my friends was explaining me how things work and he was like, Oh, so you know, like when you check this in your car, it's like the same thing. I was like, I don't even have a car. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh my gosh and yeah and like with rockets it's also like the same thing in some regards like it really seems like it's really like not so easy first times but the more you persist on right. that the more you learn and right. it was really interesting like i now am part of the rocket team in my school for about one year one year and two months um and I've learned a lot there during this time, but yet like there's so many things I don't know. And like, I'm always in awe with the friends I have that they know so much more in those areas. And I just embrace the, these like these moments as opportunities to learn more. I try to push my ego aside and be like, hey, you don't need to be here like trying to be the best in that like just try to learn the most that's what really is valuable in life i right. think that when you take your ego and feel like oh i need to be good i need to be good no just be curious yeah that's when you learn the most and when you sell you do less self-doubt about yourself yeah and one of the things that really helped me to learn about rockets if like anyone here watching is interested to enter the field is building a uh, high power rocketry so this is my first that I built um, July this year. Uh, it's an L L1 um, rocket. I don't, yeah, wow. it's not super big, but like it's a great experience for you to um, get a kit and try to build yourself and see like how the principles of rockets are and how they work with a small scale version. And then oh. you kind of get even more excited to like build bigger ones and see like how things change from one to the other. Yeah, totally. this one, yeah, this one is the Hot Nozzle Society kit that I built and then I painted it myself with my art. Nice. <laughs> Take your ego aside and if something interests you, just follow that. Like you don't need to prove anyone anything. Just just follow your curiosity and I think 
yeah, that's when you will learn the most. Now, if you can't go in person in Las Vegas, you can also sign up online and you can save a lot with my code ASCEND ELLIE. That is all caps and one word, ASCEND ELLIE. So make sure to enter that code at the checkout and I will have the link in the description. So thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you plan to go to ASCEND, please let me know in the comments. And I cannot wait, seriously, I mean, to meet Gwen Shotwell will be so cool. I can't wait to hear what she has to say, along with the, I don't know, over 300 speakers that are also going to be there. It's going to be a very fun time, and I can't wait to share it with you. Mm -hmm.